we did hear from uh, Jeff Ulbrich and Aaron Rodgers discussing the decision to strip play calling duties from Nathaniel Hackett. Uh, who would you guys be more curious to hear from, Ulbrich or Aaron Rodgers, speaking with the media? Uh, you pick. Let's start with your it. Okay, so you're it, uh, the <laughs> new head coach of the New York Jets. Uh, here was him announcing the decision. Regarding the staff, um, after a lot of time to think about it and um, did not make this decision um, easily by any means, I'm going to make Todd Downing the, the play caller for the New York Jets going forward. And this is more a byproduct of a different take on things. I'm not saying it's a better or worse take on things by any means, but just a different take on things, a fresh a fresh approach so ultimately todd will have the full say on the game plan and ultimately the the, the plays that are called within the game all right so that was uh, the brand new jets head coach jeff olbrick and do I, you want to know why that is a lie <laughs> yes he's making this comment on thursday they've already had two days of practice they already knew tuesday when they're putting together the game plan who'd be calling the plays. That's not a, a light decision and one that you sit there and go on Thursday, you know what, we've given it a couple days now. We just feel like Todd would be better for how, who do you think's communicating with Aaron Rodgers during the course of practice or the offense during the course of practice to discuss this fresh start, this new approach that Todd Downing is going to go with? It's not Nathaniel Hackett up there in front of the meeting rooms. If it is... It's going to be confusing as hell to everyone who's on offense. They've already started their preparation. <laughs> so the reality is, uh, even though it's an extra day, right, because they play Buffalo on Monday night, all that preparation's already started. That decision was made by Robert Sala before he was even fired. Mm. And then once Jeff Ulbrich got put into the position, or you're it, as LaFar says, yeah, you're it. Yeah. that decision was finalized there too. Mm. Mm. That's interesting because if Robert Sala was making or made the decision, it's still this just is such a bad look for Woody Johnson. It's such a bad look. I mean, why fire the guy when the decision that was going to be made to try to give a fresh set of eyes, a fresh approach to what was taking place was ultimately the decision of the man you fired, which means you're basically saying we're going in a different direction. And, and Woody, as Woody Johnson stated with this new direction, we're going to win games and we're going to win games basically right now. And that's based off of the decisions that Robert Sala made. It doesn't make sense. Make it make sense to me. I mean, it's it's simple as this. <clears throat> I feel like they're trying to make a change for change's sake. Because in this instance, there's no issue with the defensive side of the ball. That was Robert Sala's specialty. That's Jeff Ulbrich's specialty. We talked to Albert Breer yesterday about this, right? He mentioned the fact that now you're making your defensive staff thin because you're taking the guy who had eyes on the defense and now you're putting him in a head coaching position. He's going to have to deal with a lot more. And, and now look. There's ways around that. You know, m most coaches who call one side of the football have someone who's on the other side, whichever case, you know, whichever side that is, that they entrust to be able to own that and hold it down. And their special teams coach hold it down. So it's not as big of an undertaking as maybe it's made out to be, but it does stretch you thin to some degree because there are some head coaching decisions that you've got to make. A and how you go about sharing those responsibilities and duties so the reality is, if this decision was going to be made on offense regardless, what was the point of moving on from Robert Sala? It doesn't make sense. It's a bad look. <laughs> Y'all know how I feel about um, dysfunction. So Dys dysfunction. That's 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 a bad look. L let me uh, let me pose this question to you guys. Oh yeah, here, we, right. go. So here we go. So if. Uh, if this thing continues down the way it's going because they've made this change at head coach and you can't beat dysfunction, then my guess would be if they're not a playoff team and it continues to go south, Rodgers probably ain't coming back next year. Like, it's probably – I mean, that's probably not happening. So how attractive is this job if that's the case? Because 
if they play well enough. Would and you they, want Rodgers to come back? I don't. I mean, that's, if you're an incoming head coach, would you want like really think about it? Would you yeah, want? I, I would. I would on one condition that he knows we're going to draft a young quarterback if we find one we feel really good about, and that he's okay with being back and and, and starting and playing, but knowing that. You know, we want to make sure we have the future behind him. He's going to be 41 years old, going to you know, head into 42. And that would be the condition, is being very upfront and honest about it and say we don't have any plans to play this guy as a rookie. As long as you're here, you're going to be the guy. But we have to prepare for it. And then that runs into the issue that he had in Green Bay with him drafting Jordan Love. Now, that being said, when he was you know at that age, most teams look at it and say, well, he's getting older, he's getting older. Is, is he really going to continue to play like the way Tom Brady did? And then he ripped off back-to-back MVPs. So, different story. But now we're to a point where you are into that. He's 40 and he's getting up there. There's got to be some big concern. Like, it's more legitimate, which I think he would be more open to it now probably than ever before, knowing that he's got maybe another year or two, however he looks at it. But that would be the singular condition. If I was going to be that head coach, or I, I would imagine whoever that head coach is going to be, you would come in and you would make that request. If I'm anyone but Bill Belichick, oh. I'm looking at Woody Johnson and I'm looking at Aaron Rodgers and I'm saying, hell no. I mean, even if you're, to the hell no, even no, if you're Belichick. hell no, hell no, to the hell, hell no. I don't want it. Hey, Belichick walked away from Woody Johnson when he first got there. What okay. has Woody Johnson done in 25 years? I'm just saying, on the, on I'm the just team saying now? Bill Belichick would be the only name that I could think of yeah. that could go in there and be like, hey, Aaron, like, go sit in the corner. Like, I'll tell you when to come out. Like, and, and, and if Aaron pushes back, he actually could find himself in a situation that he's never found himself in, which is dealing with somebody that doesn't have more sway or dealing with somebody who does have more sway than what he does. Sheesh. I don't know how many other coaches you could go out there and get. Not Mike Vrabel. Not not. There's there's no coach you're going to go out there that's going to be able to stand up to if something makes Aaron Rodgers uncomfortable. And and whether he had anything to do with Robert Salas firing or not. The bottom line here with Aaron Rodgers is he does not have a good track record in terms of how he handles things within the media publicly with things he doesn't like. And I wouldn't want to put my I would not want to put my coaching reputation knowing that, you know, this is this is already one of those types of jobs where it's like, yeah, you got the personnel, but can you can you do something that's going to outperform the dysfunction? You got to take those things into consideration. And I think that that would be a very daunting task. And I don't know that I would want to put my my coaching reputation on trying to come in and figure out if I can get Aaron Rodgers to do it the way that I want to do it because he's probably going to do it the way Aaron Rodgers wants to do it. Just going back to the conversation about the like year or two left. So first off, he only has a year left on his contract. The he's got three, um, or actually, excuse me, four avoidable years on the back end of this deal. So really, structurally, he's got this year and next year, and then after that, <clears throat> they're all voided. So I get rid of him. I come in, <laughs> void that contract out. Like, let, make sure my what I would want as a as a head coach is to know that we're going to draft a quarterback or we're going to find the quarterback of my choice in free agency. If I'm going to go down with this ship or if I'm going to bring this ship across the ocean, (laughs) I want who I want. Okay, great. Let me finish the rest of what I was going to say. Go ahead. His cap hit is actually really insignificant. It's only 23.5 next year against the cap. He's only 17.1 against the cap this year. So actually the way it was structured – has really allowed them to build like they have this offseason around the quarterback position and on this roster in general. Now, why they haven't spent some of that on Hassan Reddick, maybe we'll get to that uh, in, in one of our segments. But he, his base salary is only $2.5 million. You know, he, he, They do have to make a decision on an option bonus before the 2025 regular season. 
So that ultimately will determine probably whether he comes back or whether you know they want him to finish out the rest of this deal and all that. But it's it's really not that bad of a financial situation, at least when you compare it to the Cleveland Browns, for example. I don't want it. Um, to for him to be there for one more year if they were to draft a quarterback and allow him to mentor that guy and have a similar impact to what we saw, at least with Jordan Love and how good he's looked so far in Green Bay. I don't want him. Damn.